Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, here with another five minute portrait slash real world review. This time we are using the Canon 80D and 18 to 135 kit lens. Now this is a basic setup, but like I've said all along, we like to come out here and shoot real world situations with actual cameras to see how they work out. So my goal with this shoot, like almost every other shoot, is tell an amazing photo story. And this time we're here at Norman Porter. We have Mike behind us. Mike, how's it going? Good. They custom make jeans here in Philadelphia. Go check them out at normanporter.com because they are pretty darn cool. So what do I want to get? I want to get the wide shots get the tight shots, I want the medium shots, and I want the detail shots. And this shop is made up of such awesome stuff that I think this camera is going to do pretty well, giving me what I need. So remember, from time to time, you may see some other people pop into the frame because we are filming this real photo shoot. So I may just talk to them and say, hey, get out of my frame. I want to get some cool shots. The goal, photos, will transition into video as well because this camera is a great starter point for shooting video, but I think it's time to get to shoot. Uh, and here we go, just follow us along. So I'm just gonna have you do your thing. Okay. Do your thing, I may occasionally just say, hey, hold that, you know, hold that position so I can get another shot. Um, but other than that, it's really just go about your, your day and I'm gonna be here to capture it. Sounds good. Cool. So my first thing is trying to figure out what the setting should be. So I, I started at 1600 ISO because that's what felt right to me. Um, and what I have to remember with this lens is being that it's an 18 to 135, it's variable aperture. At 18, we're at 3.5, and when I get out to 135, it's 5.6. So I have to keep that into consideration. So throughout this shoot, I'm gonna go ahead and, and give you guys some input on my settings. So I also have to compete with the backlight here. Backlight meaning that the light is coming in through the windows there and I'm shooting into it. Not the easiest situation to shoot in. You'll see later when I do some of the other photos is that I'm gonna have Mike come over here so that the light is going into his, uh, basically shooting in the front and the light will be at my back. That's gonna give me better pictures. But so far, shooting at 1 200th of a second at 3.5, Oh, I love the fact that I can pinch and zoom. That's so good. Even the Canon 1DX Mark II doesn't let you pinch and zoom, but the ADD does, and I like that. So now you're gonna be over here? Yep. All right, cool. So this gives me a chance to shoot over on this side. I love this angle. Oh, I can get the, oh, this is super cool. I'm gonna bump my ISO just a little bit to 2000. Get my exposure where I want it. Basically, simple, simple tip for exposure, line it up right in the middle, because I'm shooting in manual. You'll see the plus, the minus. If you start in the middle, you're gonna get a good, it's a good starting point to get your exposure proper. Then you can just simply take a look at it and make sure it's close and go from there. And don't forget, always shoot raw. I'm just gonna lock my focus in. These are primarily tests right here. I wanna see that my exposure is good. Ooh, I love the light, the split light coming in from the window. This is gonna be super cool. Ah, uh, see, I did it again. I forgot that I go to the, the three five. It went from four to three five, but it wasn't that bad. So I'm just working the zoom. Yeah, let's check these out. So my aperture keeps changing. I was just zoomed out to f5, uh, 5.6, so I had to, to make the change to my exposure to compensate. Boom, let's take a look. Yeah, look at that, that's super cool. I had to uh, just ride the exposure. That's just one of the things with a, with a 
variable aperture lens, you have to remember to ride the exposure. Like I said, at 18, 3.5. All the way out, 5.6. I have to make the changes or else my exposure is gonna be off, but that raw is gonna help me out. I just love this setup. I know I probably need to move right here, but you hear the beep because I'm locked into single focus. Uh, I like the way, yeah, hold that. I like the way you were looking down at your hand. Hold that real quick. Hopefully it's not time sensitive what you were doing. Yeah, I like the way that I have the exposure here. The lighting is super cool. So I'm actually gonna come over to this side so I can get some other shots because I think I've done well with the, with the shots. I love that I can still cycle through this. Again, I said you can't even do this on a $6,000 body, the 1DX Mark II, but I can do it here on this body. Oh, steam. Oh, there's steam. Oh, I'm gonna have to get some steam in a second. Low, oh, the low angle's so much nicer. Plus, plus I have those Christmas lights that are gonna be out of focus in the background. They're gonna give me exactly what I want. Here's another thing that I'm thinking. I have to keep in mind the photo book. Don't tell Mike, I may make a photo book or something. I have to keep in mind that some of those images, how they're gonna look on a two page spread. Mike, you didn't hear that. <laughs> you didn't hear that, he didn't hear that, but maybe he did. Now I could probably switch into continuous focus at some point as well, but the colors and tones look pretty good and the sharpness, even at 2000 ISO looks pretty good. Now I'm at 1 400th of a second at F4 at 2000 ISO. This camera should be able to handle that ISO. What am I riding here in terms of the exposure when I'm shooting? I basically have set the ISO, I have set the aperture, even though it's gonna be variable, and I'm riding the shutter speed as I need it. If I'm zooming out, I know that I need to let more light in. Why? Because as I zoom out, it goes from 3.5 to 5.6, which means the aperture is shutting down, closing the amount of light being let in. Because of that, I need to compensate. The first thing I compensate with is I compensate with the shutter speed. It's the easiest thing for me to click my finger down on is to turn the shutter speed down so that I let more light in, which is gonna give me a great shot. Also, I don't have to worry too much about movement, though I would like to get some movement like this if he was moving faster or when we get over to the sewing machines so that I can, I can uh, get some little bit of motion blur with his face in focus. Details. Oh, we got the hands. Let's just zoom in, make sure we're sharp. There we go. I want to actually bump my ISO down. I'm going to go back to 1600. It means I'm going to drop my shutter speed just a little bit to compensate for this. Yeah, I like this side shot as well. This works well. Oh, see, I just took a picture that um, cut off just the edge of that denim right there. Now, I want to keep that in there to keep it uniform. So let me show you what I'll do. I'm locking my, expo uh, my, my focus right here on mic, checking my viewfinder coverage. I look around the edges to see where everything is because I don't want to cut off things that I shouldn't be cutting off or I do want to cut off things that I want to cut off. That's why I look around the edges. Always check in my edge of the frame so I can get the, the stuff in it that I want. Boom, exposure looks pretty good right here. Could actually go up a little higher. check my focus. That's why I keep chimping. Chimping means I'm looking at the camera, checking, checking the exposure, checking to make sure that everything is right where I want it to be. Just seeing what else we have hiding down here under the table that could work. Ooh, shears, right? We got scissors going. Just for a sec. Just for a second, all right. 
to get the... Yeah, this. Poof. So a lot of this is just seeing seeing what's happening and capturing it. That's what these candid photo shoots are all about. And I've always said this, it's okay to say, hey Mike, hold that for a second to get the shot that you need, but that's what it is. You get locked in. Generally speaking, you're not gonna do a photo shoot where you have to talk to the camera. Here I have to talk to the camera and worry about good, getting good photos, but that's why we share the stuff with you guys so that you can learn from it, so that you can go out in the world and do awesome photo shoots. And I'm seeing all this detail. We have all this fabric under here, which I definitely have to get a shot of at some point. Um, but this is cool. Let me show you, I'll, I'll give you a quick look so you can see what we're doing. So that's more of the, the, the tighter detailed shots, but as you go through, you can see this type of stuff. Looks good. Yeah. I gotta run over to this one here. All right, quick. cool. So another thing I wanna say is I would love to throw the 2.8 lenses on here. That's just me personally. Uh, but this is, if this is what you had to work with, you can get professional results with this all day long. All right. I just have these four little pieces to do. Okay. So again, my exposure is gonna change over here. Actually, it's pretty close. I'm just gonna quickly check it. I'm trying to shoot at the widest aperture possible to get that background to blow out. Even with the 18 to 135, I can still blow the background out. I just have to zoom out further. Remember that. That's it. That's it? That's it. It's all right. I'm getting good stuff. Back here for another minute or two. And then... How long does it take to go through a, a, a full pair from start to finish if you were going straight through? It's about three hours. Right. Um, give or take. Now that we're cut out, maybe less. Okay. This is kind of where I wish I would have had a pole to shoot straight down. But what we can do is use live view with this camera. And I can do it. Get to 18 millimeters. Touch where I want it to focus. So I just realized something. I went into live view, but there's a different live view. You switch the button back here to go to red to do live view for video. I simply just need to press this button to turn live view on for photos. I was trying to figure out why isn't it wide enough and why isn't it doing what I want it to do? Trying to get my angles as straight as possible. Okay, so we got that. Switch back out of that by hitting the button. Another cool thing about the, the Canon ADD is the fact that you hit the Q button and you can access just about everything you need from the raw. How many frames? Do I want to shoot single? I don't want to shoot multiple frames now. I can just turn this button. Now I'm on single frame shooting, so I'm not going to shoot the seven frames a second. Uh, everything else here, I can change the focus, change whatever I need all from the back of the camera. I love touchscreen. Oh, I love this. All right. I'm ready to do some sewing. All right. Just grab a couple things over here quick. So let me cut in here real quick. If you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Now let's get back to the five minute portrait. All right, so that's where you're gonna be? I'm gonna be on this green one here and then on this one. Awesome, so Mike's gonna set up to get onto that one over there, but I already have ideas for how I can shoot him when he's on this sewing machine. I love that I can stand far back in this corner and shoot through the other sewing machine materials to give me out of focus stuff in the foreground, which is going to allow me to get cooler shots with the blown out of focus, even with the kit lens. And now I just have to find the right angle. And then I'll check my exposure. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, I love it, I love it. 
Oh, I love it. At least it's a quiet machine. <laughs> <laughs> Loudest one in here. I love this because I can zoom in, get the tighter shots. Got to ride the exposure though. Don't want to forget about that. And when I say ride, it means drop the shutter as I'm zooming out to 5.6. Because now I want to prepare for getting whatever he's going to do on the machine next. So I'm going to get in tighter and get a tight shot of something going in the machine. I'm actually going to go back into continuous drive. This is cool. A good time. Watch. See, I have to fight the backlight here. But from the side, I get all this other detail-y stuff. See, I'm trying to get his eyes the way that he's doing this. Oh, okay. See, a lot of photo shoot is spent just being in your brain trying to see the images and then having to talk to the camera or something different. So I hope you're enjoying just watching everything as it's happening, because it's a real photo shoot. All right, I'm about done on this one. All right, give me one sec. Yeah, I want to get this quick shot, if that's okay. Yep, thank you. I'll just show you this because I really like shots like this. See how it gives us so much detail going on in the frame? Yeah. Working, yeah. You're working at a distance, but we know what you're doing. You have all of the other stuff in here. I made sure not to cut this off because in some images you, you'd be like, oh, you cut it off and it doesn't look as good. Mm -hmm. But you can simply just go through here and I love the low angles because it's just, it's, it's candid. It gives you the idea and it could be black and white. It could mm -hmm. be color. Yeah, just details, just different things that you're able to get with one basic kit lens, it's pretty cool. good. Yeah, and at some point I'll probably have you stand over here and okay. we'll do a quick portrait and the way that you were just standing with the leg crossed and everything, that was actually pretty cool. There's different names on the sewing machines. Is there like a Nikon versus Canon thing going on in the sewing industry? Pretty much, there's different manufacturers, different machines. Um, Juki, Japanese manufacturer, some of it's made in China. This is a Union Special. Um, a lot of sewing machines are based off of Union Special. They were an older company, um, made such great sewing machines. In fact, a lot of their business dropped off because their machines lasted so long. Oh, wow. Um, it's like the Packard then, issue. You know, Juki now manufactures a lot of machines based off of their original design. So Reese being a, like, Reese is known for making this type of machine, a buttonhole machine. Uh, different people have different specialties. A lot of these are really old. Some of them are new. Like the, the Jukies are newer, but nice. this is a pretty old machine. So is this Reese. Nice. That's cool to know. Yeah, the guy who actually services these machines, there's very few people left that can do the really specialty ones, like this Reese machine. The guy that used to come to me actually passed away. Oh, man. Yeah, he was retired and would come and do it just because to stay busy. But.
This is gonna look good when we shoot the video stuff. distance here. I'm trying to shoot through these different machines to give us all different types of looks. And as you can notice, I try to keep my lines as straight as possible. That's why I stay parallel here. Sometimes coming from an angle is good to get what you're looking for, but we got all the light coming in from this way. We also have all the details of these machines. That's what's allowing me to get these uniform shots that look cool on a two-page spread. At some point, I need to do some verticals. I've done a lot of horizontals, but we'll get some verticals up in there. And here on this shot, it looks like he's wearing the hat, except that's a light fixture. So I'm gonna make it not look like that at some point or some way. Can you uh, look right at me right there? Just bring your eyes up, chin down a little bit. Boom, good, thank you. Now I know we're not pushing this too much as it comes to continuous focus, but it really doesn't call for that. But I'll, I'll go into that the AI servo. Let's see what we got here. Now I wanna see if I can get that angle. Good? Good over here. Um, What's next? I'm gonna be going to that machine right behind you. Okay. Same mm -hmm. seat, just one over. All right. I need to get a, a spool of thread still. Okay. A lot of this is let this situation happen. That's why I love candid shoots. You let most of it happen, you, you see what's going on, and you just try to visualize, pre-visualize what the image should look like. And that's what we're gonna do here. I'm also thinking about, I have a lot of the tights and the mediums. I need to get some detailed shots of the sewing machines around here that help tell the story. Um, and then just more, more work. And definitely the portraits. So this is all just for one pair? Yep. All these parts are one pair. Makes you think about what really goes into it. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot goes into it, as you can see, or as we can see. All right, so we've got that right there. All right, hold that real quick for me. You don't hear the beep now, guys, because I switched out into uh, continuous focus. I like this angle.
That's cool. I like that. Going back into AI one shot here. Shots from back here. Try to get the name of the business in there. These always look good on two page spreads. Not only does it have a lot of detail, but also has the name of the business. So that definitely comes in handy. Can I ask you to look out the window real quick? Just a little more, turn, to the, like, turn your body to the side just slightly. There you go. Get a quick shot here. All right, one more. All right, you're good. Thank you. It's fun to shoot, guys. It is. It's fun. Whatever camera you put in somebody's hands, you should be able to get great shots with. I don't care if it's a kit, lens, or a basic camera to start with. It's all about understanding your exposure, your composition, and what goes into making a quality image. And at that point, you need to just get out of worrying about gear, 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 and use whatever you put in your hands. That's the point of doing these five minute portraits, real world reviews, is to show you that you can get quality results no matter what you use, if you understand the fundamentals. And what I'll say is I love using the top of the line glass and I love using the top of the line bodies. It's just that when a professional uses the top of the line glass and the top of the line bodies, it's because we have the ability to pull more out of the images we're trying to capture with that. That's why if you're just starting out and you buy the most expensive gear in the world and you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna get great results. I can take a basic camera like this, come out here and get great results, and that's what it's about. And you guys can do that as well if you understand the fundamentals and what goes in to making an image. Is this a water bottle or is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure that I wanted to see if it's part of the scene. No, it's just me hydrating. Do you, yeah, do you mind if I put the water bottle down? Uh, yeah, some of that, I've just got like some business stuff on that paper. We can move that paper and move the water bottle. This? Uh, no, the craft paper, sorry. Oh, that. Yeah. I'll, can I cover it with the notepad? Yeah, sure. All right. So this is a good rule of thumb, guys. If you go into a professional, if you go into somebody's place of work, don't pull plugs and plug your phone in unless you ask if that thing is okay. Now, Betty had that happen where they pulled a plug and they turned off his refrigerator and he thought it was broken. Don't do anything like that until you ask for permission. In this case, there's business stuff here. We don't want to get that on there, so I'm going to make sure I'm going to cover it. Not on the 4 by but just something like that. All the writing is covered. Cool? All right, because there's cool detail stuff over here to shoot. Do you make wallets also? I made that wallet. Nice. It's actually a friend of mine's design. I can't take credit for that one. And here's another thing. I'm actually gonna step further back because at 18 millimeters you get that bowing effect. I don't want the bowing effect. I wanna zoom out more. Do you mind if I move the iron up just a little bit? Nope, go for it. Thank you. Hot. Yep, don't touch the other side of it. <laughs> I just want to be able to zoom in and get this, and I was getting the edge of the iron in there and didn't want that, but we'll see how this isn't bowing anymore. Making sure I get, oh, there's, oh yeah. You'll see. You'll see. Much better. See, at first I was gonna shoot this and I was gonna cut off the lamp like that, and I don't want to, actually that looks pretty good, but I want to try to get the whole lamp in there and then get both shelves. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Mr. 
This is where this is where this stuff can come in handy. Make sure that looks good. Oh, so let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can focus in on the, the shears and get Mike out of focus in the background. See, we can get Mike out of focus in the background. Most people think you can't do what I just did with a kit lens, even while well, we're at 50 millimeters and that works. I guarantee you, should I guarantee you? Let's try it. 18 millimeters, let's see if we can keep him out of focus in the background. And recomposing, look at that. Even at 18 millimeters, you can still do it. Don't let anybody tell you with a kit lens, you can't blow the background out of focus. I call it blowing out of focus. That's just me. Other people call it bokeh. It's the out of focus area in the background. I just did it at 18. I just did it at 50. When you get close to a subject, the closer you get to the subject and the further, and then in this case, the subject are the scissors, the further away the other guy is in the background, he's just gonna blur out of focus even at 18. That's, that's awesome. I even have image stabilization on. I've had it on the whole time just to give me an extra little sta stability when I'm shooting. That is super cool. I'm gonna actually gonna bump my aperture a little bit, turning this back dial. We're gonna do it about 5.6 because I wanna get a, I wanna get a little bit more of the scissors in. My exposure looks about good. Like I said, line everything up in the middle. Change my angle. Do you mind if I move the Norman Porter uh, tag? No. Because I want to get some cool shots of that, very similar to what we're doing here. Yes, I am, I am changing the scene a little bit. That's just what I'm doing to get the shot that I want to get. But I ask permission. And I don't want to cut off Mike's head up there. I just did on one of the shots. Yeah, I want that, I want that. So I need to back myself up, zoom in a little bit. Oh, these chairs, did you put the leather on these chairs? Yeah, that one. Oh man, you made it feel, that's so much better than just the other stuff. <laughs> Oh, that looks cool. And we're at F, uh, F5. Let's go to F6.3. Now, because I'm going to F6.3 from 5.6, I want my exposure to be basically exactly the same as it was before. So that's uh, half, -ish, uh, half a stop. I'm just gonna go to 1 25th of a second at F6.3. I should have about the same exposure. The reason I do that is because I wanna get more of the Norman Porter in focus, and we did. It's just, it, it's really cool when you can find the angle. And this is, a, this is a proper stance. You see this stuff? Look at this proper stance. The butt's out, perfect. Oh, and I don't have a vertical release on this camera, so I'm putting my hand over. A lot of people like to go under. I personally like to do it over. This is awesome. This is cool. All right, so I think we're gonna take a quick second here, and then we're gonna fire it back up to get some portraits and then move on to doing the video. So I hope you're liking the photos that I'm capturing, but if you're finding yourself not being able to capture images that are similar to the ones that I'm capturing and you wanna take advantage of what your camera can offer you, well, I have the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto, which is a three hour guide that's gonna help you unlock the potential of your camera to help you get the photos that I know you can capture. So if you wanna check that out and get a free preview, head over to fronosphoto.com guide right now to check that out and now, Let's get back to the five minute portrait. So you saw that we got a bunch of candid shots now. I wanna throw in there some portraits. So I got Mike to stop. Thank you for stopping. No problem. And then we'll get these portraits and then we'll get back to work and, and, and switch this off into video to see what we get. So I'm thinking, I, I love the way that you're looking right now. 
this is cool. So I'm just gonna direct you from here. Then we'll probably move on to this side, back up against here. That's just some cool, actually I may have you sit on the stool for that, but let's focus in on this. So I'm inching away like I'm scared, which is funny. I like what you just did. You know how you did that and you look down on that angle. Give me that again. With le Let's see, I just have to see how this looks. Mind if I move the stool? Nope. I ask for a lot of permission when I do these things. So I'm gonna do, how tall are you? Six five. That's too tall. It's not too tall. How many times have you hit your head coming up the stairs? Enough. Enough? Enough to warn everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just checking my exposure first. That's what that first shot is about. It's cool. Um, I definitely wanna get in some tighter shots and some different angles. All right, here we go. So this is just looking at me. What, five, six now? Boom, just making sure that I get everything nice and tight. Tighter shots are always nice. Boom, you hear lots of beeps because that's uh, my focus beep. Now let's turn this way, follow me, just turn your feet slightly, there you go. Now that's towards the window so we get some cool light coming in. A portrait like this is fine, but it doesn't show the work environment. It doesn't show what's going into the situation. And I've said this a million times, that you could be at the Eiffel Tower and do a headshot as tight as I just did right here and never know you're at the Eiffel Tower. I love showing the scene, showing the environment. Tight shots like this, yeah, fine, boring, boring to me, but I wanna get the wider shots uh, that, that tell a story of what's going on. That's why I'm going with these ultra, these full body ones to start. Now just look down on an angle. All right, chin up just a little bit. All right, look out the window for me slightly. Let me just check that I got my exposure is good. Yeah, that's perfect right there. And just let me know if we're taking too much time. We'll get you moving. All right, now look right at me, cross your arm, perfect. Boom, okay. What I wanted to do is have you sit right here with your back towards this. Okay. And I'm gonna come up over here on this angle because I wanna get a shot with you in this workbench area. Still hot, right? Probably. Mm, where can I move it and not? We can unplug it and take it out of the picture if you want. I think I got it right there. That's perfect. Um, Here I have the windows on both sides, which are pretty cool. Love the workbench right there. So I'm also making sure that I don't get that light in the back of your head. So I'm just gonna show people this real quick. Probably not a good shot. I'm gonna just show you, this is what's called a merger. See that? We have the uh, we have the light coming out of the top of his head. Don't want that. We want to be right here, so the light's more to the other side. Boom! A couple more on the wide side. I'm just trying. I'm losing that other hand. I'm losing that, and I don't want to cut it off. Yep. Good. See guys, the picture I just took, I'm losing the fingers on the hand. I'm not a big proponent. Cutting those off in the shot, I wanna have them in there. So two things, I'm gonna raise my angle and get this. All right, how about if you cross your arms for me? Yeah. There you go. And this way, I, the angles, I like straight lines. This line of the table was running out of the frame in, in an awkward way, in my opinion. So I just wanna get these shots that are tighter across. And I'm gonna back up so I can compress this more. Because I'm zooming in, I have to drop my shutter speed. Boom. I'm also gonna throw off to one of the sides so I have a full two page spread without losing it in the gutter. Cool. 
Nice light. Let me show you these real quick so you can see what I'm doing. So it shows you the work area. Look good. All right, what other? All right, can I get you standing right here? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. You can keep doing that. That works. Okay, we got these. That looks good. I'm going to get down here on a little bit of a lower angle. All right, what else could I do? Oh, I like those. Those look pretty good. What am I missing? I'm going to put you over here real quick just on this angle, because I got the nice light coming in. We can move this back over there, and I'm just gonna shoot this, and this will be the last one, and we'll let you get back to, to doing your thing. Perfect. Uh, where's the exact? Hmm. So I'm gonna see, you see how the table is like this? There we go. But then, and then I have to contend with the background. Now I have to contend, do I want you in the exact middle of that, or the exact middle we of this? We can ruffle these patterns, so. All right, let's see. Sure my lines are straight, make sure everything's good. So here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna zoom in a little bit. Obviously I can't do that unless I move to one of these sides. Then I'm gonna get super wide. I'm right here. Perfect, yeah, here we go. I'm gonna actually have you move this way a little bit, follow me, and be straight on with me, perfect. as much as I can. Now I'm going to F4. That's where I should be for these. I just want to get this ultra wide with the table bending in here. Okay. Make sure my background's not distracting. I think I'm good. I'm good. Cool. I'm gonna let you get back to work. I don't wanna take up too much time for that. So I just wanna go around and get some detailed shots. There's a lot of, Mike's taking a quick break and I wanna get some of the other things that are going on that just are really cool detail shots that help tell the story and explain everything that's going on. I got this right here. Candid portraits that aren't set up. So, detailed shots like this can look good on a cover of a book, it can look good on a background of a website. So, I just shoot them. You never know when you need something or a plate that we use when we do video. Uh, as a background to pop photos up on. And here's your lumberjack material. What, what, what's next up for you? I'll just do a little more sewing over here and then I'll come to this area. All right, do you have a bunch more sewing to do at all? Yeah, I mean, I've had, we're not even halfway through. Oh, all right, so yeah, if you wanna go, just go do your thing and I'll I'll get my details and then, then I'll move on so we can move on. 
Is there anything on the board behind you that is bad to shoot? No, nah, it should be fine. Right. Okay, got some details. Let's get this into a video camera. One last thing I'll say about that though, if you're gonna shoot stills and shoot video, I'm a big proponent, do the stills, then focus on the video, or focus on the video, then focus on the stills. Don't try to jump back and forth on both. If you try jumping back and forth on both, you're gonna end up missing a lot of the stuff you wanna capture. Let me jump in here real quick and remind you that if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when my videos go live so you don't miss anything. Also, be sure to give a comment, like, and share it if you are enjoying it. Now, let's get back to Norman Porter. And I hit record, and we're now recording, and I hit the record button wirelessly on the ADD by using my iPad. They have this awesome app that allows you to not only hit record, start and stop, you can change all of your exposures, everything that you need to do right there, as well as do touch focus on the iPad. This is an amazing function. You could also do it using your cell phone because they have the app to allow you to do that. Now, normally you wouldn't find yourself sitting here and controlling the focus and going, oh, I wanna focus right here, and I touch the screen, and cinematically, it pulls the focus away from me, and oh, I wanna focus back on me, I can go ahead and touch me, and it's gonna focus on my face. This is awesome in case you're a one-man band and you just need to do your own video. You set up the tripod, you can hit start and stop, you can pull focus where you want, or it's even better if you're a filmmaker and you want to stand behind the camera and just sit there and control everything without touching the camera which would cause shake. So what is so cool here is I could be like, oh, I want to focus here on the background and there you go. And then I want to pull back to here and it moves smoothly and cinematically and looks incredible. This app and this functionality and this camera, the fact that I can hit start, uh, record and I can hit stop and make all the changes I want including pulling the focus this makes this a professional tool oh I should I should focus on me right now because I'm the one talking there we go so now it's focused on me this is a professional tool for shooting video I don't care if you're using a full frame camera or you're using a camera like this if you get great footage that looks awesome it doesn't matter what you shot it with so that's it we're gonna keep playing around with this pull focus So that's pretty much a wrap on shooting this Canon 80D with the kit 18 to 135 here at Norman Porter. Mike, thank you very much for letting us do this. It was awesome. Now, we're gonna send it back to the loft so I can analyze the photos and give you my feedback on this camera and this setup. So let's head back to the loft.
Here we are back in the loft and it's time to go over the images and my feelings for shooting with this camera. Now every time I go out and do a five minute portrait or real world review, it's always a challenge to use a different camera, a different lens, because I'm so used to using, say, a Nikon D5 or a Canon 1DX Mark II, but the challenge is being able to take any camera that's in the world, any camera on the market right now or even in the past, and going out and getting fantastic results. So when I first started shooting out there at Norman Porter, it was a little, you know, I had to get out of my head. I had to get back into the shooting mode and that's exactly what I ended up doing. It didn't matter that I wasn't shooting with a D5 and I didn't have a bag full of lenses. I had one lens to work with. And when you start to realize that you have to use the tools that are in your hand, you start to forget about those tools and concentrate on capturing the photo story because it's all about the photo story. Let's take a look at some of the keepers, some of my favorite images and remember you can download download some sample raw files over on the website as well as the full res JPEGs. Now, you know I always say it's about the story and that's exactly what I was able to capture right here. Starting off with a shot like this, it gives you the ability to see what's going on in the scene. And I love how I go from the wider angle like this to a little tighter shot along these lines. And look at the contrast. It looks thick. It looks great. Remember, it's not just about how you take the photos, but it's also how you process the raw files when you're done. The raw files can be brought to life in post-processing. I see so many people taking photos and neglecting their editing. It's about capturing the moment and then being able to bring it to life in the computer as if you were in the dark room, except we so happen to use Lightroom right here. I just love the moment captured. I love, this is at 2000 ISO and everything looks perfectly fine. And yes, I see noise and I see grain on the screen right here, but when you print it out in 17 by 22, you do not see the same imperfections in the print as you do see on the screen. Now see, I like this image. I got some hand movement going on there. I've got the steam coming out of the iron, but then when I was building the photo book, I had to decide which photo was better, the one with the steam or the one with the arm outstretched, and I thought that this image worked out much better. So as we move on, you can see how the story is being told. We started off with a shot like this, and then as you can see, it bookends with a photo like this. That's what the story is all about, being able to build each individual image into something that tells a cohesive story. I love this shot from the back in black and white. Yes, we have our, well, we'll point out we have our film pack on there. That's because we were filming and getting Mike's reactions when, when we were doing the photo shoot, which is part of what we were doing. If it was just a photo shoot without a film crew there, obviously you wouldn't see that. But what I love is the ability, what is this, 18 millimeters? Uh, 1600 ISO, 1 200th of a second at 3.5. This is telling an awesome story. The black and white looks fantastic. The angle, the just everything going on in the image, it shows you his workstation. It helps tell a cohesive story. And then this is one of my favorite ones from the entire shoot. So I had this printed out on the Canon Pixima ProGraph 1000. Uh, and the print, when it came out of the, the, the printer, I looked at it and I was like, you would never know what camera and what lens combination took this picture. Because when I was looking at a large print, a 17 by 22 in black and white, I couldn't see the grain, I couldn't see the noise, I couldn't see imperfections. Sure, if I looked super close, I probably would have been able to find something. But in the grand scheme of things, if I showed you that print you and you didn't know what I took it with, you would never know what I actually took that picture with. What it really comes down to is that no matter what camera you have and what lenses you have, you need to be able to get great results. The problem and the thing that I'm tired of hearing is that I can't get great pictures because I have a basic camera and a kit lens. The truth of the matter, it's not the camera or the lens that is holding you back, it's you. You are in control of the pictures that you are capturing. If you don't understand your exposure triangle, composition, and how to use your camera, you're not gonna get fantastic results. But the truth of the matter is, this picture, I wouldn't know what it was taken with if I, didn't, if I didn't know what I actually took it with. So let's keep moving on here. Part of the story, you get the tighter shots, the colors look good, the black and whites look good, I'm happy with the raw files. My focus for the most part was, was on. Now of course there's some where I missed the focus, 
just by a little bit for whatever reason. Maybe the camera didn't hit it. Maybe I personally missed it. But I think for what it was giving me, the focus points, I put them where I wanted and I got the shots in focus that I wanted. Again, don't forget in the story, there's the thread that goes into sewing the jeans together. And that's what this is right here looking out the window. Look how thick and awesome this contrast looks. I was shooting in manual exposure. There's no reason for me to be an aperture priority in a scene where the light really isn't changing. And the only thing where the light is changing is when I zoom out and my aperture goes up or, or the light we get closer to the window. So as you keep moving on, you can just see the story that's being told. And coming up to an image like this is where it should wow a lot of you. Now, why should it wow you? Because most people say you shouldn't be able to blow out the background with a basic kit lens. This is here to prove to you that you absolutely can. If you understand how to use the camera that's in your hands, you're going to get fantastic results no matter what camera you pick up. And being able to do this, look at this. We've got the Norman Porter stuff in focus with Mike out of focus in the background, but you know that he's working. This is one of my favorite shots from the entire event. And this proves it to you once again at, we're at 69 millimeters for that one. We're at 29 millimeters for this one. It, it theoretically breaks all the rules that says you shouldn't be able to blow the background out with a kit lens, but you absolutely can. And this totally proves it. We have the portrait photos. We have the shots set up like this to help round out the entire story. And then we end with something along the lines like this. That's just a handful of what I think are the best of the best of the best images with Honor Sir. At the very end of this video, we're going to have a slideshow that's going to go through what I think are my best images, so be sure to stick around to go and watch that. But also, remember, you can download these RAW files and all the full res JPEGs to go ahead and tweak them for yourself to see how the results are with this camera. Am I happy with the results I got? Absolutely. When I was doing the editing video, which you can check out in the, in the playlist, list, I was looking at these images going, wow, it's just, it's great to be able to do that because it's a challenge. Every time I set, step out there to get images while we're filming a video and to come back and get great shots is awesome. So if you haven't signed up for the Fronos photo email list, just look for this orange box over on my website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. If you haven't liked this video on YouTube or given us a comment, please do that. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right here on YouTube so that you can be notified when my videos go live. So I'd love to hear your feedback. What do you think about this five minute portrait? Leave us comments down below and that is where we're gonna leave it. Don't forget, stay tuned for the, uh, the slideshow after I do my sign off. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.